There are islands in the Pacific that hold their histories like whispers, woven into chants, carved into stone mounds, hidden beneath centuries of earth and memory. But none guard their past quite like Samoa. For generations, its people have told the story of divine origin, that they were born not of migration, but from the heavens themselves. From Lagi, the sky realm, torn open by some cosmic act of birth, that Samoa was not discovered, but remembered. But science is not content with legend. And now, in one of the largest genetic studies ever conducted on any oceanic people, a different story has begun to surface. It is not a tale of conquest or singular arrival. It is stranger, quieter, and more fragile than we imagined. It begins, not with voyaging canoes or conch shell heralds, but with a silence. Roughly 2,800 years ago, people first stepped onto the shores of Samoa. We know this because they left behind a trail of ceramic fragments, intricately patterned, unmistakably lapida. This lapida culture, originating from the Bismarck Archipelago near Papua New Guinea, was long thought to be the ancestor of Polynesians. Their pottery marked their movement like breadcrumbs across the sea, from Vanuatu to Fiji to Tonga and finally to Samoa. But then something strange happened. In Samoa, that iconic lapida pottery vanishes within a few generations. Where Tonga and Fiji saw flourishing sites and robust settlement layers, Samoa fell oddly silent. Archaeologists have scoured the islands, but the early layers yield little. A few stone tools, some post holes, no monumental structures, no grand settlements, some blamed erosion. Others theorized that the record had been buried by volcanic ash or washed away by time. But the genomes would tell a different story. In a groundbreaking project, researchers analyzed the entire DNA blueprint, full high covered genomes of over 1,100 modern Samoans. Not partial data, not low resolution snapshots, but nearly 38 times whole genome coverage pulled from 33 villages across all census regions Apia Urban, Northwest Upolu, the rural inland districts, and the western island of Savai'i. What they found was a population bottleneck so extreme, it seemed almost fictional. For nearly 1,800 years, from the moment of first settlement around 2,800 years ago until just 1,000 years ago, the effective population size of Samoa hovered at levels as low as 700 to 900 people. At its height, still no more than 3,400. This wasn't a thriving expansion. It was survival on a nice edge. A near-isolated genetic echo chamber, nestled between the vastness of the sea and the fragility of early subsistence. Why? Why would a culture capable of sailing thousands of kilometers suddenly plateau? The answer is still debated. Geography may have played a role. Samoa's rugged coastline offers fewer wide beaches and safe harbors than neighboring islands. Volcanic cliffs rise abruptly from the sea. Rainforests cover much of the land. For Lapidus settlers, whose survival depended on fertile coastal plains, Samoa may have presented fewer opportunities for growth, or perhaps the isolation was intentional. The early Samoans may have chosen silence, pulling away from the world to refine something of their own. What is clear is that, during this time, the island saw no major influx of newcomers, no sharp genetic disturbances, no outside upheaval. Instead, a singular genetic pattern persisted, blending two distant ancestries into one, Austronesian, from the northern arc of the Pacific, Taiwan, the Philippines, island Southeast Asia, and Papuan, from the deep past of near Oceania, New Guinea, and the Bismarck Archipelago. But even here, there is a puzzle. Samoans today possess an average of 24% Papuan ancestry, significantly less than their Polynesian cousins in Tonga or Tokopia, who carry closer to 35%. This discrepancy would crack open a new layer of mystery, because if the Papuan DNA didn't come after Samoa was settled, then it must have arrived before. The presence of Papuan ancestry in Samoa, long overshadowed by broader Polynesian narratives, has now taken center stage in a re-examination of how the Pacific was settled. Genetic markers tell us that the Papuan contribution to the Samoan gene pool is neither recent nor random. It is deeply rooted but subtly distinct from what we observe in nearby island groups. What makes this discovery even more remarkable is the connection to an archaic human lineage. 
the Papuan ancestry found in Samoans carries with it traces of Denisovan DNA, a genetic signature inherited not through Neanderthals, but through a separate hominin group that once roamed the highlands of New Guinea and surrounding regions. This connection adds another temporal layer to Samoan origins, linking their genetic past not just to seafaring Austronesians, but to hominins that vanished tens of thousands of years ago. Modern Tongans, Tocopians, and Polynesian outliers in the Solomon Islands show stronger signals of this Papuan Denisovan blend. Yet in Samoa, the proportion remains consistently lower. Researchers believe this implies that the admixture occurred not on Samoan soil, but earlier during a critical phase of movement through near Oceania. By the time voyagers reached Samoa, they were already a genetically fused population, one that carried Austronesian language and culture, but also ancestral fragments from Papuan lineages. These insights challenge the notion of a singular, linear migration across the Pacific. Instead, they suggest a process of layered contact, encounters, integrations, and selective survivals that rewrote the biological identity of the travelers long before they reached their final destinations. When scientists compared the genomes of Samoans to other Austronesian-speaking populations, they noticed something else, a surprisingly high degree of uniformity. Unlike many Pacific groups that show regional genetic clustering, the Samoan genome is remarkably cohesive, with only subtle variation between urban and rural districts. This points to a sustained period of isolation after settlement, where internal dynamics, not repeated waves of external contact, shape the population. Even within Samoa, the genetic distinctions between Upolu and Savai'i reflect internal drift rather than foreign input. The island of Savai'i, in particular, shows a slightly reduced level of genetic diversity compared to Upolu. This isn't just a geographic observation. It's a window into how community structures and movement patterns evolved over centuries. To understand these patterns, researchers turn to rare genetic variants, alleles so infrequent they typically vanish in large, mobile populations. In Samoa, however, these variants persist. By tracking their distribution, scientists reconstructed pathways of gene flow between villages, revealing that most interregional mixing has occurred in recent centuries likely influenced by urbanization and modern transport. In the capital region of Apia, where roads, education, and international access are concentrated, the gene pool bears faint traces of East Asian, European, and West African ancestry. These components are negligible in rural areas, but slightly more present in urban genomes, offering a subtle record of colonial contact, labor migration, and globalization. Still, the overwhelming majority of the genetic code remains oceanic, anchored in the Austronesian, Papuan blend that predates European arrival by millennia. Notably, genetic timelines estimate a major demographic expansion in Samoa beginning around 900 to 1050 years ago. This inflection point corresponds with a sharp rise in effective population size from a few thousand to tens of thousands over a handful of generations. It was a period that transformed not just the numbers, but the way people lived, organized, and moved across the land. While archaeologists observe this shift in the form of monumental mounds, intensified agriculture, and increased inter-island voyaging, the genome records it as a surge of recombination, a breaking apart and reforming of ancestral segments that signifies rapid growth and intermarriage across previously small, localized groups. The reasons for this explosion remain under debate. Some suggest the arrival of new people, possibly via Micronesia, brought fresh cultural systems and possibly partial replacement. Others argue it was a purely endogenous event, a moment when innovations in farming, social hierarchy, or navigation unlocked the latent potential of a people long held in demographic stasis. Whichever theory proves correct, the genetic record is clear. This was not a slow drift. It was an acceleration a cultural and biological renaissance that forever reshaped the Samoan archipelago. As the population expanded, so did complexity. Around the same time that genomes began showing signs of rapid growth, Samoa underwent a visible transformation. Structures once limited to household scale evolved into monumental earthworks. Terraced ridges carved into hillsides hinted at organized agriculture, while the rise of steppe platforms suggested emerging hierarchies. These were not just architectural shifts, they were manifestations of a society reorganizing itself. 
Alongside this architectural flourish came a defining cultural force, the Matai system. Chiefs and order leaders emerged as custodians of lineage, land, and law. Their authority wasn't arbitrary. It was earned, conferred through ritual, and deeply embedded in the familial structure. The power of the Matai extended beyond governance. They were keepers of memory, speakers of genealogies that stretched across centuries, anchoring each family to its ancestral story. And the story, encoded in both word and genome, was now expanding outward. From this demographic and cultural core, Samoan voyaging intensified. Oral traditions, preserved in ceremonial speeches and genealogical chants, speak of journeys to East Polynesia, to Tahiti, Hawaii, the Cook Islands. These migrations, long thought to originate solely from Tonga, now appear increasingly tied to Samoan networks. Genetic signatures found in eastern Polynesians show partial overlaps with those in Samoa, suggesting that the archipelago played a more significant role in the second wave of Pacific exploration than previously assumed. But even as Samoa helped seed new island societies, it was not immune to outside forces. By the 18th century, European ships had begun anchoring off its shores. These initial encounters brought tools, trade, and missionaries, but also viruses for which the Samoan immune system had no defense. Within decades, population numbers plummeted. Oral histories record this time not in dates, but in loss. Whole families erased, villages emptied, traditions nearly severed. The genetic record captures this collapse in haunting precision. Identity by descent analyses show a bottleneck beginning roughly 10 generations ago, coinciding with first sustained European contact. Genomic diversity plummeted. Segments of inherited DNA became longer, reflecting the reduced number of reproductive partners. A pattern emerged, one that mirrored known epidemics and social disruptions documented by missionaries and colonial administrators. But the story doesn't end there. Roughly five generations ago, Samoa entered a new phase. Population size began to rebound, first slowly, then exponentially. Alongside this growth came another shift the introduction of new ancestries. East Asian segments appeared, consistent with Chinese laborers brought during colonial administration. Small fractions of European and African ancestry surfaced in urban centers, introduced through settlers, traders, and military personnel. Though these influences remain minor in terms of total genomic percentage, their presence reflects a broader truth that even islands in the center of the Pacific are not immune to the gravitational pull of global history. Yet through it all, the core identity persisted. More than 97% of modern Samoans trace their lineage primarily to a singular genetic cluster, Austronesian-derived, Papuan-infused, and deeply local. This cluster, unique in its balance, remains the dominant ancestry across all census regions, whether rural or urban, coastal or inland, even among individuals showing minor external admixture the foundational oceanic signal remains overwhelming. This is not genetic isolation. It is genetic endurance. The Samoan genome tells a story of continuity under pressure, of a people who, despite demographic collapse and foreign incursion, preserve their ancestral threads across millennia. The rare variants scattered across their DNA are not just data points. They are echoes of resilience, reminders of generations who pass their identity forward through birth ceremony, and survival. And when placed against the vast backdrop of the Pacific, this resilience becomes even more striking, because while other island groups fractured under colonial divisions or lost ancestral links through forced migration, Samoa retained something few others did, an unbroken chain between its ancient settlers and its present-day people. Today, with the full sequencing of over a thousand Samoan genomes, researchers can do more than trace ancestry. They can map the movement of ideas, languages, and memory. The Samoan genome doesn't just reflect who came before. It encodes the rhythms of interaction, the pressures of isolation, and the resilience of identity under centuries of change. Within this blueprint, scientists have found patterns so specific they can detect regional migrations within a single island. In Savai'i, they observed lower genetic diversity but deeper interrelatedness. Evidence of small communities holding tight over generations. Upolu, with its ports, schools, and external links, 
show slightly broader ancestry footprints and more genetic drift. But even there, the core remains unmistakable. And that core is not static. It breathes. It grows. It adapts. Where ancient artifacts fall silent, DNA still speaks. It tells us that Samoa's early settlers were few, but they endured. That they were already complex before stone platforms rose. That their identities were forged long before any missionary, any colonial map, or any scientific expedition tried to explain them. It also tells us something universal. That human history is rarely simple. That identity, like the ocean, is layered, surface currents above ancient depths. That no people are the product of a single journey. Samoans are not just descendants of Austronesian voyagers or Papuan foragers. They are the outcome of ancient experiments in coexistence, of selective contact, of thousands of quiet decisions made by ancestors who shaped a society we're only now beginning to understand. And perhaps this is the most remarkable part. While so much of the ancient Pacific remains buried, contested, or erased, the Samoan genome has preserved what archaeology alone could not, a record of resilience coded into the body of a people. In the end, the scientific revelations don't erase Samoa's oral histories. They deepen them. The tear in the sky. The birth from the heavens. It may not be literal, but it holds a truth that science now affirms. That Samoans are not the product of isolation, but of convergence. Not just one people, but many. United by ocean, bound by story, and remembered in every cell. And as researchers continue decoding these genomic archives, one thing becomes clear. The past is not behind us. It is within us.